In this video, we're going to learn about a process called dimensional analysis. We're going to be doing these problems um, within the metric system. Now, this is an important video. Dimensional analysis is a mathematical tool that we're going to use all year. Now, learning any, anything new, there's always a learning curve associated with that and a, and a period of growth that has to take place. Um, commit yourself right now to understanding the process of dimensional analysis. It will, it will pay off um, with big dividends um, all year. So dimensional analysis is a technique used to convert between different units of measurement. For example, converting miles to kilometers. We'll follow this same template or, al or algorithm um, every time. There'll be a given. This will be given to us in the problem. And we'll multiply the given by some type of conversion factor. This will be given to you. Um, or you may have to memorize it. And then when you multiply the two of those together, you will get your goal or your answer. So you'll start every problem writing down what's given to you. You'll multiply by some conversion factor, and then that will give you the answer. I placed a star by this to remind us that it's important. The terms in conversion factors are equivalent quantities simply expressed in different units. So once again, if you have a conversion factor, there'll be equivalent quantities in different units. For example, one kilometer is equivalent to 1,000 meters. The only difference is they're expressed in different units, kilometers and meters. But these, remember, are equal to each other. Let's look at a problem. How many kilometers are in 5,250 meters? Now, you could probably solve this without using dimensional analysis, um, but that's good. I intentionally picked an easy problem to help us understand um, what's going on using this algorithm here. So this is your given. The given, just like it sounds, will be given to you in each problem. The first step in all of these problems are to write your given. So even if you don't know where to start a problem, you can always start by writing the given. And then draw one of these tables. Some people call it a t-table. I don't know what the correct name is. Um, some people don't even show them. They just put a multiplication sign. But what it means is we'll be multiplying whatever is in here times whatever is in here. And stuff on the bottom in the denominator, um, that will be divided. All right, so we have the given, and then we're going to multiply by some conversion factor. This here is our conversion factor. So which one of these will go in the bottom, and which one will go in the top? Now this is very important. You'll probably recall this from math class. If you have a unit in the numerator, and that same unit appears in the denominator, it means that those units will cancel out. So the only unit we have left is kilometers. And that's what we're trying to figure out. How many kilometers are in this many meters? So to perform this computation, what you would do is you'd multiply this number times this number and divide by this number. You can do this all in one step in your calculator. Of course, you don't really have to multiply by 1, so do 5,250 divided by 1,000. What you'll get is 5.25 kilometers. This conversion factor has an infinite number of sig figs, and this number has three sig figs, so our answer has three sig figs. Okay, I would like to remind you of two things which will be consistent in every dimensional analysis problem that we do. If you check these two things, this will work for you every time. Number one is the units in the numerator will cancel the units in the denominator, but only if they're the same unit. Secondly, our conversion factor has to be 
equivalent quantities. Where students sometimes go wrong is they write a conversion factor in, but the conversion factor, they're not equal to one another. So double check. Does one kilometer equal 1,000 meters? It does. And does the unit in the numerator cancel the unit in the denominator? It does. So the unit on our answer will always be the unit that's found in the top right.